Welcome back. So first thing I wanted to show you guys was I'm starting to build up a few hours on this. So there's uh, about another five and a half hours on this since I put that clock in there. So I know a lot of that's uh, idling, but you know, I've got to start somewhere. So next project or first project for Monday, uh, somebody was nice enough to recommend that I try out this Royal Purple um, Resip oil, which is uh, a compressor oil and it's a 30 weight and the difference between it and uh, the one that I'm running is, well, first of all, the viscosity is uh, the index is 100 at 40 degrees, where the other one was 69. And uh, this particular one doesn't have any detergent in it, so um, that should actually prevent it from getting aerated at all uh, when it's operating. So um, the goal was to switch out the old uh, fluid and uh, put the new fluid in, so that's what I'm in the process of doing here, as you can see. And then if you look at strain out, you can actually see the bubbles in there. So and that was, you know, just with no pressure. I'd already removed the pressure from the from the strut. And uh, there you can see more coming out, but now I'm sort of forcing it out here and there with a little bit of uh, compressed air in the nozzle at the top there. So, uh, yeah, that oil really wasn't that great. And it, it wasn't that clean in there as well when I did it because I didn't really flush it out very well. Uh, which I fixed this time because I flushed it about three times with um, brake cleaning fluid and uh, blew it out with air until it was uh, clean and there was nothing, no other dirt coming out of it. And then uh, ultimately got this uh, Royal Purple, so that's what I'm using there. It's the uh, Sinfilm Recip 100. And there you see I'm just pu putting some in the syringe there and then I basically pull the strut down and draw it in there and then turn it left and right a bunch of times. And uh, similar to what I did last time, just to make sure I get all the air out of there and uh, fill it all the way up to the level that it needs to be filled up. So, and you can uh, right away, I could feel that this had more viscosity than the other one. Uh, it was definitely more difficult to move the strut left and right like that, like I'm doing um, when this fluid's in there. So here, back on the torque wrench again, just to do a bit of a test. Last time I ran, I got around about 10 when I just did a normal pull like this. And I did a really quick pull and I managed to get 20, but this one here, just on a normal pull, you see I'm getting 22 on there. So it's definitely uh, more viscous and hopefully that'll be a solution. So this is just taxing it around uh, after that in the afternoon. And I didn't really get a chance to run it out on the runway because there's something else I've sort of been working on. Um, but you know, it taxied nicely. It didn't have any problems with steering. So even though it's more viscous, it's still steering nicely. And uh, the reason why I didn't get a chance to run it is because I'm actually in the process of doing some tuning on the engine for the first time. Over the weekend, I took a course on um, diesel tuning fundamentals from HP Academy which is a, um, a group out of New Zealand that has online courses and so I've, and fortunately their course that they, they actually had there was uh, done using the MoTeC ECU so it was directly applicable to what I'm doing and they were using a Toyota four-cylinder diesel engine so uh, not quite the same engine but pretty much the same kind of uh, uh, you know data that they're working with in the same program so I learned quite a lot on that, and uh, the first thing I noticed in when I started looking at the parameters I have for the tuning on the, the Audi engine was the original map that was done um, on this engine was only using half of the fuel pressure available on the high pressure fuel pump. So it was only ever using uh, 95 uh, megapascals, and the fuel pump is capable of 200 megapascals. So what that means is the injection cycles are basically running twice as long as they need to run. And that's why I've been getting um, high EGTs and why I've been seeing smoke coming out because it's just the fuel's taking too long to be injected. So here I'm just in the process of learning how to tune all this stuff as you can see here. And I've still got quite a little bit of work to go um, but anyway, I'll give you a little bit more info on that towards the end of this video, but it's exciting to see there's definitely some more inf uh, power to be had out of the engine. So now we're on to Tuesday, and although I really wanted to do more tuning because that was really exciting to me, um, I also wanted to do some taxi testing and see if the uh, no shimmy problem has gone again. 
which I fully expected it was because you know this is basically back to where I was before with a clean set of oil in the strut so uh, this is the last run I did for the day on Tuesday uh, I did about four different runs down the runway at varying speeds and this is the quickest one that I did and this is also just with the old tuning setup, so not the new tuning. So you can see the smoke coming out the back there. That's going to be fixed soon enough. And there also too, if you notice here, I did get the nose off right there just briefly. Um, so that's the second time doing that. So just at that speed, and it was about 65 miles an hour, the nose is just like almost perfectly balanced there when you pull full elevator. Uh, but as you can see there, no shimmy. So, and it was happening every time before, um, you know, like, I think it was like eight runs or something I did where it happened every time and before that it was eight runs I did where it didn't happen at all so in between that when the the old oil got all aerated and foamy um, from all the use and then also the dirt and stuff in there that's what um, you know led it to have the shimmy again it just didn't have any damping ability anymore with all that um, you know the nitrogen infused in through the oil so hopefully this new oil with the uh, without any uh, detergents in it is designed to you know for compressors and stuff to exactly not have that problem um, to not get aerated and hopefully it stays like that um, if not I'll just keep searching around for the correct oil that does it but uh, you know fingers crossed that this is a solution and as I said I ran it like four times um, down the runway today and varying actually I think it was more than that because I ran two earlier and then four later on yeah, I think six times down the runway today and didn't have a shimmy in any instance uh, not even the slightest bit so uh, here's a uh, little bit of video showing the nose that this is from an earlier run um, so you can have a look at that and just pulling out onto the runway right now Now, this is not the run where I actually got the nose off and I didn't go all that fast on this run but you know the, the shimmy before was coming in at around about 40 miles an hour and then sort of stopping when you backed off down to about 30 miles an hour um, but it looks pretty stable there I mean there's probably a little bit of flex in the fork I tried doing a sideways test where the aircraft just sitting on the ground and you just push the fuselage left and right and the fork does have a little bit of flex in it so that may be the thing to tighten up as well later on if um, you know the shimmy comes back um, but you can see it's pretty smooth there and, you know there's probably an instance there if you go in slow-mo where it looks like shimmy's going to get started but then that's what the damp is for to stop it from getting going so that's what that uh, looks like and uh, now going back this next bit of video is, is the actual first run that you saw with a side camera angle and this is from uh, in the cabin and again this is with the old tune up so I'm just running there the maximum fuel pressure I'm delivering to the engine is 95 megapascals and after I've gone through and tuned this up that's going to be double that so the injection time will take about half as long and uh, should see much better performance out of there and I'll see better efficiency, lower, lower fuel burn as well and more power and less smoke uh, and also lower EGT so it's just going to be a win-win-win uh, but it's a matter for me to make the adjustments to the pressure but at the same time I have to adjust the timing um, because the timing is coming in too early and as I increase the pressure I have to um, sort of uh, reduce the timing so it comes in a little bit later in order, in order to even things out but uh, as you can see I got up to about 60 miles an hour on this one a little bit faster maybe yeah, 65 and this is where I lifted the nose there and you can see it's kind of bouncing along getting light so yeah back to the square where I don't have a nose shimmy so that's good and uh, improvements coming on the performance which is good Oh, and the air conditioning is working great now, so I was in there for, I don't know, a good hour and a half today, just taxiing around and had the AC on the whole time, and I think the cabin was maintaining about uh, maybe 68 degrees or something, and outside it was 85, so that was pretty nice. And I've got it sort of coming in the front vents, but also down by my feet, so you get this nice little cool air around by your feet, which is nice. So pretty happy with that. 
getting these problems sorted out. So AC sorted out, uh, no shimmy sorted out for hopefully uh, permanently now, and it's not just going to be something where that oil gets uh, you know degraded again, and I've got to change it out. But uh, I can't think of a reason other than you know somehow it manages to get aerated again that I'd have to change it out again right away. And uh, pressure I'm running in there is about 220 psi of nitrogen and that sets the strut up so when I'm in the aircraft there the nose strut is sort of hovering between uh, between one inch and one and a half inches uh, compressed so this is that same run now looking from underneath and uh, if you look carefully here you'll see uh, when the nose comes off so yeah Pretty happy with how this is running today. Of course, super hot again the last couple of days, 90, 90 degree temperatures this afternoon. But in the morning it was only about 85. And if you look right after I take the power off here, you'll see I get the nose off just like twice, just briefly. There you go. And again, just little hops. So uh, now they've got the shimmy sorted out and I'm getting this power sorted out, the next thing will be to see if I can take it down the runway and literally hold that nose off just maybe an inch or so for an extended length. And uh, Mark is currently working up the spreadsheet for me that's going to give me the angle of attack, um, various different angles of attacks and also air speeds for where he estimates that the main wing will lift off. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of pick an angle of attack that I think is going to be appropriate and, uh, you know, not too steep and then see if I can get the aircraft to, you know, come up to the airspeed that he has and see if I can get it light enough to just barely get the mains off the runway. And, you know, it's probably going to take, you know, a week to dial that in, just practice and getting the muscle memory and stuff to get up to that speed and feel comfortable about it and keep everything under control. Um, but I think it's totally doable. I think I've got enough power and enough runway to be able to do that. And uh, we'll see how that turns out. So just to give you a little bit of a preview of what's going on in the MoTeX software, this is that last run that I did there um, where everything was just sort of the standard tune. And you know, you can see there the higher uh, EGTs there, 1700. And I'll explain that before. That's actually higher than what the cylinder temperature is. Um, but here you can see the red dots there, that's where I've gone and made adjustments to the map that haven't been tested yet. And I'm going to be bring, slowly bringing that up to basically 195 at the maximum there. But as I do that, I've got to go and adjust the timing here. And you look at the tab here, these timing numbers need to be uh, reduced here um, to keep sort of things tight. So Because I want the injection to happen, like spread out the time to be spread out either side of top dead center for the piston. And so the pressure um, is what dictates how long the injection um, is and the timing start indicates where it's going to start. So you have to make those two match in order to get um, it to sort of sit evenly on either side of top dead center. So I should see some decent performance gains from that. And I wanted to thank my friend Les there up at German Diesel Motor Works in Pennsylvania for helping me out with some tuning info. Anyway, that's the update for this week or for Tuesday anyway. Tune in on Saturday and see what I have for you. Thanks for watching.